Hi guys, little video here. I'm going to show you how to lower the output power of a microwave oven. Now, there is a reason why you might want to lower the output power of a microwave oven. Um, a lot of people have microwave ovens in, in, in camper vans, wagons, and if it's running from an inverter, the, uh, the inverter might not supply enough power to run the microwave. So I've got a set, little demonstration set up here. Now what you can't do to lower the output power of the microwave is simply turn the power selector down. And the reason for that is they cannot alter the output from the magnetron. What they do is they vary the duty cycle that the magnetron's on. So if we look at this little graph I've drawn, uh, at 50% power setting, the magnetron for five seconds will supply full power and then for the next five seconds the magnetron is switched off and then the next five seconds it's switched on again and next five seconds it's switched off now that's how they get 50 percent power they don't actually lower the output from the magnetron they run the magnetron at full power but for only half the time and that gives you like a 50 percent reduction so in this little domestic microwave um, there's a, a, a common misconception on the internet that the actual capacitor in the microwave is for smoothing. Um, well, that's totally wrong. The high voltage capacitor actually forms a voltage doubler. Um, and that gets the, the high voltage. It doubles the high voltage to the magnetron to enable to the magnetron to operate. Um, now, the capacitor makes quite a difference on the output of the microwave power. So here we've got a 1.08, if you swap that for a lower one, you'll reduce the output power from the microwave and also you'll reduce um, the amount of input power you need for your inverter. So I've set up a little demonstration here, um, I've got um, a current meter and a voltage meter there, we're going to see what the microwave draws with a 1.08 microfarad capacitor. Um, and also, to show you the difference in output power, I've got two beakers, both with 200 mils of water. And we're going to measure the water in each, um, microwave for one minute, using two different capacitors, and I'll show you the result. Right, so here we go. We've got two beakers of water, um, 200 mils in each. I've made a chart there. We're going to measure the current drawn from the mains with the 1.08 mic cap and also with the 0.74. And I'll show you the temperature difference as well. So there's a digital thermometer. So I've got a stopwatch, so we're going to do it for a minute. So get that. We'll measure the water temperature. So it's 13 degrees on that one and into that one. So the water temperature when we start is both 13 degrees on each beaker. Um, this meter here, that's the incoming mains voltage 243 and that is the current we're going to draw from the mains, what the uh, microwave draw draws when it's running. So first of all we'll put one beaker in. Uh, I'm going to time on my watch. Right, so when it gets to the um, 60 seconds at the top, I'm going to turn it on. And we're just going to uh, microwave for one minute. So here we go, we're coming up to the top. There we go, that's the microwave on. And you can see there, we're drawing six amps from the mains. Uh, and that's drawing six amps with a 1.08 microfarad capacitor. Three, 
two, one, stop. Right, so that's like exactly one minute. So we take that out. Give it a stir around. Right, so that's temperature raised up to uh, 49 degrees. And the mains, the current we're drawing from the mains is 6 amp. Right, next I'll repeat the test, but the 1 mic 1.08 microfarad capacitor, I'm going to swap that for a 0 0.74 microfarad one, and then we'll repeat the test again and see the difference. Right, so here we go again. Um, I've got this second beaker of water. Uh, this time I've swapped the cap from a 1.08 to a 0 0.47. Um, and we're going to uh, put that in there and I'll do the same test as before as soon as that gets to 60 seconds I'll turn the microwave on there we go three two one go there we go right so that's with a 0.74 cap now, if you look at the current meter there, before we were drawing 6 amps from the mains, now we're only drawing 4.4 amps. So you can see how much difference swapping the capacitor for a smaller one has made. We're drawing a lot less current from the mains, which means this microwave now will probably run from a 1000 watt inverter, where with the bigger capacitor in, it wouldn't run from a 1000 watt inverter. Now, obviously the downside is, um, it's going to take longer to heat up because we've actually lowered the output power so I'll just get onto the time again we've got about 15 seconds left and um, I'll record the results here and then we'll record the temperature difference as well get ready to switch it off 3, 2, 1 and off that's the microwave off around now if you look at that the temperature's only risen up to 37 degrees so we record that right so here's the results of the test I've recorded down and it clearly shows um, with a bigger capacitor you draw more current from the mains and you generate more output power. A smaller capacitor, you draw less current from the mains and you generate less output power. Um, now that is how you can lower the output of a microwave oven if you're struggling, say with a 1000 watt inverter and it won't power your microwave, it keeps cutting out. That is how to lower the output power from the microwave so it'll run for an in inverter. Uh, now the downside is because there's not much output power when you're cooking something you have to cook it for quite a bit longer um, but that solves the problem of running uh, a microwave for, you know from an inverter in a, a wagon or a, uh, a camper van um, now if you just want time gone um, I'll just do another little quick video because microwaves are dangerous things and um, these capacitors are all all very dangerous and um, I'll show you just a safety tip just right at the end of the video if you give me a second right so here's a safety tip um, capacitor in a microwave can be charged up to about 4,000 volts um, now this is obviously very dangerous you could kill yourself by touching these terminals um, now all microwave capacitors have a built-in feature they have a safety resistor um, it's usually about 10 megs and it's internally connected inside here across these two terminals um, now I've drawn a little picture here but if you want to look at this capacitor here it actually shows you there your capacitor and there's an internal 10 meg resistor now what the resistor does it discharges the capacitor when you power the microwave down now obviously 
a resistance of 10 megs charged to 4000 volt this is not going to discharge instantly it's going to take a while so before you change any part like this in a microwave and bear in mind this resistor built in it could even go open circuit so this capacitor could be charged for a long long time um, what you need to do is you need to either leave it for a considerable time to discharge on its own or the safest thing to do with an insulated tool is to short the terminals out to make sure it's completely discharged um, now I'm just going to, I've got another old microwave, uh, I've got it all in bits, I'm just going to plug it in and I'm going to show you how much charge this actually hold, uh, holds and then you can see the, the dangers of it. Right, so here we've got, I've got um, a different microwave now, I'm just going to show you this. So there's a high voltage capacitor, there's the two terminals. Now what you could do to discharge it, you could just unplug it from the mains and leave it overnight. Now the only danger is if the internal 10 mega resistor has gone open circuit this capacitor could still be charged up the next day. So the safest method is to get a well insulated screwdriver like this and to touch them terminals together like that and make sure the capacitor is completely discharged before you uh, attempt to remove it or touch it. Now just as a demonstration to show you how dangerous this is. Um, I've got it set up here, I'm going to turn it on. That's it, that's the microwave running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it here and then we're going to short the capacitor out when it's charged. So that's unplugged. That's your capacitor. Right, just in case you missed it guys, I'll just show you this again. So the microwave is actually running, get ready to unplug it, that's it, completely unplugged, move over to the high voltage capacitor there, and watch this, did you see that? So that is the amount of charge held in there, when the microwave not even plugged in. So uh, before you do anything whatsoever with a microwave, always discharge with a well insulated tool the high voltage capacitor so there you go guys um, keep watching subscribe for some more and uh, I'll have some more interesting videos goodbye